Although the average time between two recessions is 4.8 years using data going back to 1854, if we only use data after the Second World War, the average time between two recessions is actually 5.9 years. And if we use data starting from 1982, which you could say was a more comparable economy to the one we have today, that number gets stretched to 8.8 .8 years. So that would potentially put the next recession at 2028, which would probably make people that are uninvested in today's stock market regret their decision as the performance of the S&P 500 could be very strong if a recession doesn't occur until 2028. Of course, recessions don't just happen because it's been too long since the last one. They occur because certain conditions are in place in order for them to happen. And one of them can be seen on this chart right here. This is a chart that shows us housing activity in the United States, showing us the number of homes that are being sold in the US going back to the 1970s. The vast majority of the time, the number of houses being sold is going up. But sometimes housing activity drops. And the vast majority of the times where that has happened in history, we've seen an economic recession follow shortly afterwards. So declining activity in the housing market predicts economic recession. The reason for this is that housing reflects one of the most important purchases in people's lives, something that most people put as a top priority in terms of purchases. If all of a sudden people are no longer buying homes, it suggests that the consumer is becoming weaker. If he's already unable able to buy a home, it's unlikely that he'll be significantly increasing his spending in other areas of his life. And as we know, less spending translates into lower economic activity and can possibly cause a recession. This is why the larger drops in housing activity, like in 1982, and 2008 have preceded some of the most severe economic recessions in recent financial history. In fact, if we overlay the US unemployment rate on top, you see that 1982 saw some of the highest rates of unemployment in US history, and the same thing goes for the 2008 financial crisis. Now, you may have noticed that housing activity also dropped considerably between 2022 and 2023. In fact, dropping to the lowest level since the bottom of the housing market in 2008. This is one of those recession conditions that we were talking about at the beginning of this video. If it was only up to the housing market, we would probably be in a deep recession right now with the unemployment rate at much higher levels. In fact, if we go one step further and flip the unemployment rate around, we see that the housing market weakens about a year and a half before the unemployment rate begins to rise. So again, the housing market seems to predict what the rest of the economy is going to do. In fact, if we shift forward the housing market data by a year and a half, we see that it's almost a perfect match with the unemployment rate. This is one of the key reasons for why we believed that the odds of a recession were elevated in 2024. 